All right, everybody, I am back with a brand new DC update. And as you could tell by the title of the video and the thumbnail, that yes, it is true that Wonder Woman is all but dead over there at DC Studios. And this goes to further show everybody that Warner Brothers is chasing an audience that does not exist. Because the one character that was universally loved by everybody over there at DC Studios was Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. And just because the second film didn't perform as well doesn't mean that that character wasn't beloved and that they can't have that character on screen. And we've already seen James Gunn come out and promise things that are now no longer going to happen. He said we were going to see Wonder Woman pretty soon in the DC Universe, uh, but it does not appear that that is going to happen based on some comments that came out from Patty Jenkins. And so we have some stuff to look at, and we're going to start with these photos here today. And I grabbed a few since the other day. I didn't have an update yesterday because there wasn't a whole lot going on. And in fact, James Gunn didn't even get on threads yesterday and post anything. Uh, and I don't... Today he posted a video from TikTok uh, that has to do with where they're filming Superman. But it, there was nothing Superman-centric about the video. It was just basically showing the landscaping and how beautiful it is where they're at. But it didn't give away anything in regards to the movie itself. Uh, I also posted something interesting that we're going to talk about on Twitter here today that gets everybody up in arms. And it's very interesting that you are not allowed to have an opinion online. And everybody keeps coming after me on my channel because I have an opinion. I've never claimed to be a news channel. I never claimed to be a scooper. And I've even told people, if you are coming to my channel and you're expecting an unbiased view on DC and the current regime, you're not going to get that. I am very biased. I know what I like. I am a review channel and I know what we had. I know what I like and I don't like the direction where this is going. And I can actually back up my feelings with facts based on what James Gunn has done in the past. And so if you're coming here looking for somebody to be neutral and be positive about the direction things are moving, you're not going to find that here at this channel. So if you're new here, know you're going to get a raw, unfiltered, honest opinion on the things that are going on. And so with that said, let's jump into some of these photos. So the first photo I have here is in regards to Superman, and this is true. We are basically now only going to get one DC film in each of the next three years. We have The Joker 2 this year. We are going to have Superman late next year. And the year after that, late in the year, we are going to have The Batman Part 2 if it ever gets made. And we're going to talk more about that at the end of this video today. But it's not looking good for DC fans. Now, this is really interesting. So... If anybody watched the Oscars, there was a funny moment that had Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito reunited on the stage, and they were talking about having to deal with Batman. And they called out Michael Keaton, you know, as he was out in the crowd. And he does have that Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne type look there. And it, this was a funny interaction. If you have not seen this video, I highly encourage people to go look for that clip on Twitter. It is pretty funny. Now, you have to take this with uh, just go know that this is about as big a rumor as you're going to get. So I am not saying that this is happening. Okay, guys, these are just things that I find and I bring to you guys. This is very much a rumor. It says Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, is now rumored coming out October of 2025, taking the Batman Part Two release date. It says Millie Alcock will cameo in Superman coming out July of 2025. Now, first of all, they have not said that she is going to cameo in Superman. And if she does, it goes against what Gunn says about setting up future films and not having, uh, you know, cameo porn in the film because that's he said that that's overused in film. So if they do this, he's going against two different things that he said. OK, but she has been cast as Supergirl. And if that's the case, you know, he said things, you know, people are not cast until things are about to go into production. So there is a chance that Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow could hit, could hit, you know, the, the, the cameras, 
much sooner than we might think it will. But take this uh, with a grain of salt. This goes back to what I talked about in my last video. It said Michael Keaton on if he'd return, ever return as Batman. He said, never say never. Uh, I thought his performance was one of the highlights in the Flash film. I didn't like the comedy with him towards the beginning when they first met him as a hermit. But outside of that, I thought he did a good job coming back as Batman. Now, here's something interesting. This is something I laughed when I saw this article because you want to talk about just shilling for the studio. It says exclusive Superman's full costume reveal teased by producer. It says fan could fans be on the verge of a super revelation. Natalia Safran, spouse of DC Studios co-head Peter Safran, has dropped hints about the impending unveiling of David Corinthwet's Superman costume. Now this next line cracked me up. It said the internet went into overdrive recently. No, it did not. When they released this symbol, it was talked about among some DC people, but it was nowhere near the firestorm they make it out to be. In fact, I could tell you that when Zack Snyder had his thing with Joe Rogan, that got a lot more buzz around it than this Superman costume did, you know, the symbol. But it says, when James Gunn shared a sneak peek of David Cornsweet's Superman attire. However, this appetizer has only intensified fans' cravings for a more comprehensive look at the icon iconic outfit. As updates on the film's progress trickle in, Natalia Safran tantalizingly suggested that fans will need to exercise patience a little while longer before the full costume is unveiled. Not for a bit yet, Safran teased in an Instagram comment, but soon enough, and it's oh so good. Sure it is. Now this picture that they put here, I really hope that the costume is not sucked into the body like that. Uh, if if it's going to look like that in the film, that's not going to be a good look. That's going to be kind of awkward. That suit needs to show that symbol as it's always been always been flat and, and prominent. Uh, I don't like it sucked up against the body like that. I think it looks funky. Now, I had to laugh when... This came across my plate. Uh, this, These are, you know, people see the writing on the wall. My commentary in the last video, I'm not the only one that feels this way. It's the brave and the bold. This is a take on Batman and Robin, uh, the run. Uh, this is Morrison's run, and it shows James Gunn at the helm getting ready to cut off Batman's head, and we have Pattinson's Batman sitting down with his head down. And... This is interesting because everyone believes that this is where this is headed. And I don't think the Batman 2 is safe. And like I said, I think there are possible reasons why it got delayed. I don't think it has anything to do with the story because I can guarantee you that Reeves has been working on it. The studio has been working on it. But James Gunn wants his stuff to be prominent and only his stuff to show. And if you all remember that the reason they announced that Superman and Lois is going to end with season four is because James Gunn doesn't want it to interfere with his Superman project. We already know the Batman, the Brave, and the Bold is also supposed to come out in 2026. That was the original kind of expected release date for it. And you really think he's going to have Batman, the Brave, and the Bold come out at the same time that the Batman 2 does? He's already made it well known he doesn't want competing franchises. And he may, since he's the head of the studio, he may wait this out until... Reeves just walks away from this and says, I'm done, and then they cancel the whole Batman universe. And for me, this is the only interesting project on the docket right now. I'm really not interested in much else. I am not interested in the Superman reboot. I am going to go see it, and I do hope it knocks my socks off, but I'm going in with extremely low expectations. Uh, anything Batman for me is highly anticipated, and I'm afraid of what they're going to do with this. And, and, what they're going to do with Batman, you know, these fears are going to come in. We're going to talk about that with this whole Wonder Woman thing that came out this morning. So here it is from DC Film News. Patty Jenkins says her Wonder Woman journey is over and adds DC Studios isn't interested in doing any Wonder Woman for the time being. And this was through an article. Uh, well, this comes from a Talking Pictures podcast. But she also had an interview with Variety, and we're going to look at a bigger comment that she made in regards to that. So this comes from Variety. It says, Patty Jenkins says her Wonder Woman journey is over for the time being easily forever. 
They aren't interested in doing any Wonder Woman for the time being. It's not an easy task. With what's going on with DC, James Gunn and Peter Safran have to follow their own heart into their own plans. That's her way of saying, I don't like what they're doing because she actually walked away because of the differences. She's already made that well known. We already know Ben Affleck has no interest in directing or doing anything with them, even though James Gunn said they were looking for something for him to do. We already know that Cavill walked away. That was the first announcement. And, I, you know, based on everything I'm seeing, I'm thinking that he walked away because of what they saw uh, happening with DC and what the plans are. And you can see that everybody that comments on the DCU who used to be attached to the DCEU Keep saying to everything about James Gunn and Peter Safran doing their own plans, which made which leads you to believe that these people do not believe in these plans. She goes, I don't know what they are planning on doing or why, so I have sympathy for what a big job it is, and they have to follow their heart and do what they've got planned. I think she does know. I, I She definitely had a sit down with James Gunn, you know that there were things that were talked about, and they just don't want to come out and say it, but it looks like everybody who used to be attached to these properties wants nothing to do with what they're doing. And again, that goes to show you that the studio is going after an audience that does not exist. So when I woke up to see this Wonder Woman story, I wasn't surprised. And if you look at all the projects that were announced in Phase 1 of the you know first chapter of the new DC Studios... Most of the projects are just weird one-off or just weird things like Waller, Creature Commandos, the Amazon show. These are just weird projects that nobody asked for. I don't know how good an Amazon show is going to be without Wonder Woman. She would have to be there to narrate it or do something, but without the involvement of an actual Wonder Woman, what is the point of that show? It's just going to be a weird show based on a group of characters that is going to be a niche type thing that I don't think is going to appeal to a lot of people. I just don't see the interest being there for a project like that when you could have done a Wonder Woman 3. Even though Wonder Woman 2 was not well received, if they did a Wonder Woman 3, people would be there. People like Gal Gadot. She's a good role role model for girls, and the guys definitely like her. And so... That is a good go-to property, but again, they are walking away from it and doing their own thing, projects that people didn't ask for, DC fans didn't ask for. You're always going to get those one-offs that say, yeah, I'm interested in it, but that's the minority. Now, what's really interesting, and there were some comments made on Twitter. Uh, So we actually had Grant Morrison come out and talk about the uh, the podcast that Zack Snyder had done, and he said Batman has to have a no kill rule, and it goes it, it goes against his you know he has to have that psychosis of wanting to save people because of his parents getting killed, and that you can't you can't go against those things, and it was kind of a knock on what Snyder had said, and I made the comment on Twitter, and I just cannot believe just the 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 shitstorm that comes from making an making a comment about an opinion that he had. And I'm going to make it very well known to everybody that I do not like Grant Morrison as a writer. I think he's a hack writer. I've never enjoyed his work that I've seen in DC or anything else. He does weird stuff, weird stuff. And he'll try to just grab something from a story that was done 40 years ago and throw it in there just to be weird and to try and make things relevant and sh- to me, it seems like he went to a comic pile, pulled out an issue, read it, and said, you know what, I'm going to incorporate this into the story that I'm working on just to put it in there. There's no rhyme or reason for it. He does weird stuff, okay? And I want to point out that people came, you know, I made this comment that I think he's a hack writer, and his opinion is no more important than anyone else's opinion, okay? I made that comment, and then I got piled on for it. Oh, he's one of the and I said he's not the gatekeeper. He's not a Batman expert. And he's not the gatekeeper of Batman. And people came out in droves and were just trying to go after me. And I, I stood the line. I, I don't think he's a great writer. His opinion is no better than Zack Snyder's or anybody else's. 
And people tried to make that comment about Zack Snyder. And I'm like, it's not about Zack Snyder. I didn't even say Snyder's name. This was a direct critique on Morrison himself. And yeah, he's written some Batman stories in the past, but do you realize that he actually wrote a story where Batman had a gun and killed Darkseid using a gun? Yeah, he actually had Batman kill Darkseid with a gun, with a bullet. So you can't sit there and say Batman doesn't kill. Grant Morrison did it in his own comic book, The Final Crisis Storyline. It happened. You can want to do all the mental gymnastics that you want to, but the fact was he had Batman use a gun and kill the villain. Okay? It happened. And you could sit there and say, well, he had a purpose behind it. But Affleck didn't have a purpose in the movies. That's not what we're talking about. You either have a no-kill rule or you don't. You cannot sit there and criticize one man's work. And I keep pointing out to people that Zack Snyder did not write those movies. He just directed them. So people continually bash Snyder, but they'll give everybody else who does the same things a pass. Like James Gunn bringing all these characters into the Superman movie when he introduced Batman and Wonder Woman in the second film in Batman vs. Superman, and everybody was all up in arms and crazy. They're, they're rushing it. They're going too fast. But James Gunn comes out with an established universe ready to go, and everyone's like, oh, it's all cool. It's good to go. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Grant Morrison, he can have Batman kill people with a gun, and everything's okay. But anybody else does it? Oh, my gosh. They'll give a pass to... You know, the directors who did, you know, the original 89 Batman, you know, Tim Tim Burton, and, and you'll give Christopher Nolan, those characters killed too. But Zack Snyder does it, and it's like, man, there is some weird, weird hatred for Zack Snyder out there. Like, these people have a sickness. And it is a fact that your opinion can be different from mine. And my opinion is no more valid than yours. Your opinion is no more valid than mine. They're all opinions. Everybody can have their own opinions. There are two writers I do not like, one in comics, one in film. In comics, it's Grant Morrison. I do not like his stories. The stories I've read with him are just weird. And then Damon Lindelof. In movies, I can't stand Damon Lindelof. First I ever heard of David Lindelof was at the end of the the, the show Lost. And he came out and admitted that they wrote stuff into the show that they never had intentions of answering. He, They did it just to get people talking at the water cooler come Monday morning. That's a hack writer. You're just throwing stuff in there to get people to talk, and there's no rhyme or reason for it. And then the second time I was exposed to him was when he did Prometheus. And they talked about it took them so long to come up with a second movie because he had written them into a corner and made things. He did things in the movie that just had no relevance. Like when they saw the goo in the room in Prometheus and up on the wall was like this mural of a queen alien and a green canister and they never discussed that or go back to that again. It's like he throws stuff in the movie just to throw it in there. He did that in the show. And then I saw him do, you know, the the Tomorrow World uh, with, um, what's his name, who had played Batman, uh, you know, the, the, the Disney Tomorrow World movie and He had written that, and it was garbage, and I can't stand the guy now. Like, if he writes something, I won't watch it. And people were like, well, he did The Watchmen season one, and it was amazing. Yeah, it might be amazing, but I'm never going to watch it because they asked him to come back and do a season two, and he refused to. He can start stuff, but he doesn't know how to end it. He just He's a hack writer, and I feel the same about Grant Morrison. I feel like he injects stuff into the stories that really don't have any relevance, and he does it just to be cute about it. But my opinion is mine. You can have a different opinion. If you really like Grant Morrison, great. I do not. But hey, have at it. If you enjoy it, if you like what James Gunn is doing, great. I don't have to like it. We can all have our own opinion and still still get along, but not on Twitter. Twitter is like, it's people dealing with absolutions. Like it's the most craziest thing I've ever seen. The amount of hatred that is on Twitter for Zack Snyder, is like at a disgusting level. You don't even have to invoke his name. And I told people, I was talking about Grant Morrison specifically. It had nothing to do with the comments that Zack Snyder made. 
I was just saying, I don't care for Grant Morrison. And people were like, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And I had to block a bunch of people because they became belligerent. I'm just like, what is wrong with people? We can all get along. We can all get along. All right, guys, there's my update for the day. What do you think about this revelation uh, in regards to Wonder Woman? What do you think about what's going on with the Zack Snyder stuff, you know, the, the, the podcast and all, still the fallout from it? Like, this stuff is some weird stuff. It's like the freaking Twilight Zone. All right, guys, there's my update for the day. I will be back with further updates as more stuff gets released. We'll see you on the next video.